Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of all, and in this video we're going to have a look at making some alien parasitic infection that's slowly taking over a building. So this actually started out as me having a look at how to make some vines for the fantasy stone building that I showed you in the last video, and it turned out that that's actually very very quick and easy to do and we'll be doing that as part of the beginning so if you're just looking at creating vines then this would be good for that as well but this project quickly turned into something else and I'm going to be perfectly honest I'm still getting to grips with it but it does make for some very interesting effects and I can foresee some people probably getting ahead of me on this which is fine that's the point of these tutorials and if anyone does find anything useful please do relay it back to the community because it's really nice to get some tips on how this will all work for the betterment of everyone. This process is going to be using an add-on that's already present in Blender. So we're going to go to Edit and Preferences and you'll see why I say this would have been very quick if it was just a tutorial on Ivy because this is called Ivy Generator or Add Curve Ivy Gen and you just need to tick that box and essentially Blender will add Ivy for you which is great. But there are a few tricks to this especially in adding to it in the way that we're going to look at today and definitely in terms of 3D printing some ideas that you want to pay attention to if you want this to print successfully or you don't want to have a nightmare cleaning your 3D printer afterwards. So as always save preferences or if you've got auto save preferences you can just close it and we've got our building. Now this is obviously a very simplified building I've not got many details on it just for demonstration purposes. And actually, if I was going to be doing this in a project, I would probably make a simplified version of the building to do this on and then copy it across just because if you've got a lot of geometry, this is going to slow everything down a bit and that could get a little bit annoying. Now, the first thing we're going to deal with is that in Blender, I pretty much model that one Blender unit is effectively one millimeter. And that actually doesn't seem to work very well with Ivy Generator. It wants to use that as approximately being a meter. So we're going to have to deal with that. And let's get straight into this and start shrinking this building down. Let's have a look at that. So at the moment we've got this one, two, three, four, five, about five blender units high. So we're going to need to do that. And obviously I'll just make this larger again. At the moment I can just quite easily press N and I've got the scale here. So I can just multiply that back out to one at a point where I need to. So this Ivy generator works off the cursor and we need to set the cursor as the point where we want this to start. Now, if I was going to do this as some sort of infection, for example, I'm thinking of a Tyranid infection if this was in 140,000 or maybe some sort of demonic infection, I'm going to start this relatively close to the bottom. Uh, so I'm going to put this just here. So I'm going to shift and then right click to move the cursor. Alternatively, you could come and select the cursor icon and then you just can click to move it. Either one's perfectly fine. In fact, let's put it a bit close to the side there so we can see how this wraps around different objects. And then we're going to start the Ivy generator. So if I press N and come down to where it says create, this brings up the Ivy generator and we've got a lot of options to play around with here. And we're going to have a bit of time looking at some of these. This is the main bit that I need to explore a lot further because at the moment I've got a good idea on what maybe about half of these do and I'm still playing around with the rest of them. So I'd suggest you have a play around as well. The other thing that's worth noting is at points this is going to look rubbish. So just bear with me because again, it's a lot to do with the settings that we need to play around with. Now at the moment, straight off, we've got an IV max length, which is the longest it's gonna be of one meter. That's gonna look pretty rubbish. So I'm gonna up that to about eight. And the other thing that this does automatically is it tries to put leaves on it. Uh, these leaves aren't actually really leaves. If I uh, add new ivy, you will see that you get all of these planes, which I'm assuming you'd use instancing to change into leaves, but either way, we don't want that. So I'm gonna take that off and I'm gonna delete those leaves because we don't want that. And at the moment, this IV is very, very small and it's very, very complex. And it could really cause some problems for people's computers if you haven't got something that's got a decent processor. So I'm just gonna delete that. We don't have to delete it every time. You'll see there's an update bus in the bottom left-hand corner. But the main thing that we're going to fiddle around with here is some bits that will deal with that. Now, the first one is the branching probability. Now, I want all of my parasitic sort of infective tendrils coming out of the bottom. I don't want it starting part way up. And I'm also doing this to sort of simplify this for the computer. So I'm going to put this branching probability up to one, which means everything should come out just at the bottom and nothing's coming out later. So let's do that first of all and see how that looks. 
and it's still pretty mad. But we're going to make this a bit simpler. So first of all, having a look at this, I would say eight might be a little bit long. So I'm going to bring that down to about six. And then if you just click update, it will update the IV. That looks a bit more manageable. Now, if we do ever click off of this, we're not going to be able to have that as an option. So just bear that in mind. Uh, you can just delete it and start again, but it is a bit tedious. The other thing is this IV size is making this a lot slower. Now, the IV size, if I pause over this, it will always tell you what it does, is the length of an IV segment in Blender units. And from what I can tell, an uh, IV segment, and I will go into this, which means that update is going to disappear and go into edit mode, is that each one of these, essentially each vertex, that is what they mean by an IV segment. And obviously this is making a huge amount of geometry for the size of this model, which is going to slow everything down. So I'm gonna delete that and I'm gonna, I don't know, put this to 0 0.06 and at least let's have a look at how that looks. So add new IV and you'll see that processed a lot more quickly and it doesn't look as messy essentially it's looking in a way that we can see each of the individual tendrils that's coming out and that's going to be a good thing now there are some bits that i want to play around with and these weight settings are something i'm still again playing around with but the first one that we want to deal with is that a lot of this stuff is coming out quite far from the building and that's going to cause a lot of problems with printing for example like that that's never going to print successfully and we want this essentially stuck to the building so i'm going to up this adhesion weight to about 0 0.3 i found is quite good and the other thing that we don't want is i don't want any bits that are hanging down which obviously normally would happen with ivy but this is being something more parasitic that's crawling up the building and it's also going to make things annoying to print so this gravity weighting which assumedly gravity is down i'm going to change that to zero so that that's not going to be a problem again update the ivy and you can see everything's now flowing a lot more upwards or to the side and you don't have as many bits hanging down so beyond that it's just playing around with the settings i will mention in case anyone doesn't know that if you ever get to a point where you've done something and you really want to change it back if you just right click on any one of the settings, you can click this reset to default value, which means you're gonna get back to whatever it normally is in case you've made too much of a mistake. Now, a couple of ones that I will play around with is the ivory branch size. Effectively, this is gonna be the thickness of the ivy, but we're actually gonna deal with that more later, but you can deal with it here as well. For example, I could put that up to 0.02. Oh, I clicked off, so I'm just gonna to to delete that and add new ivy again. And obviously you can make this fairly big. That looks way too big. So uh, let's just put that to, down to 0.15 and update the IV. Maybe just 0.01. And that's looking a bit better. But as I say, there's going to be a better way to source out the size of the IV later. Now at this point, this is probably looking good enough for me. And I'm going to move on to the next stage in this. Obviously you can do what you want and keep playing around with it. But there's a few bits after this that are really important to play around with. So... Let's click onto this first of all, and we can start making some changes. Now, what's great about this is if I go into edit mode, these are all curves. This seems to be how the IV is generated through these curves with these randomly determined angles. And you will notice there's some slight problems with this. For example, there are a load that are going behind, which is obviously a problem. I will say I've tried using shrink wrap with this and it generally goes a little bit messed up. For example, if I tab out of this and go to shrink wrap, select it to be on there, you'll notice that it generally goes quite flat, which is really, really weird. Um, and even if I go outside surface, it's still staying relatively flat. It, it just doesn't seem to like it. So at the moment, I've resorted to playing around with the vertices, and it's really easy to do that. You can just move them around. For example, those, I could either G and Z them to move them down, trying to keep them in contact slightly, and the other thing you can do is if there's any angles that are a little bit off, for example, that one, you can just press Control and X and delete those out. So relatively easy to fiddle around with. For example, here, if I select those, I just want to get more that are going to be in contact with the surface so that I don't have a problem when printing. So there's all just little bits to fiddle around with so you can get it how you want the most important bit being to check for things like this. These end bits that despite us having fiddled around with the properties are pointing down and that's just not going to print well. 
And let's say, for example, here, where neither of those are on the end, so G and Y, G and Y. And what I mean by that is the end, sorry, wasn't connected to the surface, which is going to cause a problem in printing again. Same here, G and Y, let's move that in. And so on. And let's say here, G and Z, let's bring that down a bit. And those three, if we just control and X, we can get rid of that. And we've got that sort of stuck to our surface. Let's get rid of that one. G and Y, maybe there, move that out. So there is gonna be some fiddling around with this to get this exactly how you want. The settings we've done should have fixed most of this, but it is worth having a look around and seeing what you can change. Now, a couple of bits that aren't really negotiable on this, or at least I don't think they're negotiable, is if you want to 3D print this, we can go into the curve in the object data properties panel. And if we go into geometry, we can firstly and need to put in fill caps. What that's going to do is if I find an end of one of my tendrils, you can see that it is essentially hollow at this point. And we need to click that so it's going to make a manifold object. Let's get rid of that. And if we actually just for demonstration purposes, get rid of that one, it will still fill the last one there. So really, really useful to be able to do that. Let's move that so it's a bit more connected. The other thing that we can do is if I'm in object mode, is that here we've got the resolution. At the moment, while this looks smooth, this resolution will up that. So for example, I can make that a little bit more round. And for the depth, this is where I can change how thick things are. If you remember, I said we can do this with the IV branch size, but actually we can do this just as easily afterwards here. And that'll give us some good looking bits. So again, here we've got something that's going to look really off. So let's get rid of those. And that and that's G and Y to move that in. And then these ones here just look like they're going to cause a problem. So I'm going to get rid of those. Something like that. So this is the bits that we're going to have to focus on, the bits that are going to take a bit of time. Can move that down, get rid of that, and so on. Now, I'm not going to fill around with all of that for this tutorial. I'm just going to make those a little bit larger so you'll be able to see them nicely. And I do quite regularly like to go in and just maybe delete some of these. Like, this is way more complicated than we're going to need it. But at the same time, it adds a nice, weird, horrible, slightly gooey texture to everything. And I think that's quite fun. But yeah, especially on these corners, this is going to be the big bit to start fiddling around with, is things like this. So let's get rid of those. So we don't just have something pulling out the wall. And again, G and Z, move that down. So again, we've got everything looking like it's sort of connected, or at least it'll pass scrutiny without looking like things are coming out of the walls. Here, for example, we really want to get that so that it looks like it's actually attached to something. So, and any of these sharp angles like there, that doesn't look nice, let's fix that. So that's going to be the main bit of time that's going to be taken here. That one, let's G and Z that up a little bit, just to make it a little bit longer. But yeah, there's definitely going to be some fiddling here. It's not an instantly done process for us. But we want to make this look a bit better. And at the moment, this isn't going to print. And even when I right click, and I'm going to click Convert to and Mesh. Now when I go into it, we've got all of this mesh work here, but it's still a little messy. Now, do note that once you've done this, moving things around, for example, like this, is going to be an absolute pain you're going to have a really hard time to change things. So it is important to have done everything earlier. Now, the biggest problem with this is at the moment, this is not a manifold object. If I sort of pass into here, you can see we've got everything cutting through everything else. And because this is one object, this is not going to be something that we can just use a Boolean to bring together. So we have to have an alternative approach to this. And that approach is and what in my mind makes this look really cool, it's gonna suddenly change this texture to be something quite interesting, is if I click on this, press tab and go into sculpt mode. The other way of doing this is if you go to the top left and click sculpt mode, all we wanna do with this is remesh it. And to do with that, we're gonna press shift and R, and it's gonna come up with this box that shows us the size of the faces we're gonna remesh to. And we want these relatively small. 
So something like that. And in fact, I might go in a little bit closer, Shift and R to have a look at how small I'm actually making those. And those are still quite big, somewhere like that. And I'm just moving backwards or forwards to change that size slightly. So let's try there. And then once I've selected that, I just press, instead of Shift and R is the resizing, I press Control and R to do the remesh. And you'll see what this has turned into. It looks really sort of a bit creepy, to be honest. And that's what we want. It looks like everything's sort of gooing into each other, like it's growing away from each other and then growing back together, as if it's this horrible alien looking parasitic life form. And this is gonna add a lot of strength to this. For example, this bit is coming away from the wall, but it should be strong enough to print. I would say that is still a little bit questionable, so we'd have to be a bit careful there. But this is gonna make something much more printable and much more fun and we can if we choose to come into this if I pull out my brushes and we can use the normal things that we'd use on brushes for example we could smooth some of these out if I wanted to to make them less harsh so that's up to you and what you like the other thing that we can do which is quite fun if I smooth that out is we can use the inflate brush which is here and if I run that across we can make this more sort of pulsating look to it. Something that I think looks, again, a little bit more organic. And as if it's passing sort of vital fluids up the length of this. Now, if we do get anything like this, where we get the points crossing over each other, that is going to be another point where we want to remesh. So Control and R. And that fixes that problem so it's still printable. So there we go our horrible looking parasitic organism attached to our building. And right down here is where I'd add something in like the original organism or maybe even a dead body that it's growing out of that's been hit with some sort of ammunition that has these parasitic growths that come from it. A little bit War of the Worlds looking where you get this sort of red fungus coming out and uh, trying to change the ecosystem for the use of the alien invaders. So a really fun tool, something you can play around with. And I'm quite curious, this is my next project, is to have a look at this and put it on a sculpt of a biological being to see if this would look good there as well. As always, if you enjoyed the video, do please give it a like. It really helps share the video around and it helps bring more people to the channel. I hope you have a lot of fun with this and I look forward to seeing it being used on some projects.